How's it going guys? My name is Stone and I'm back with another video. Thank you guys for being patient. It's been tough trying to write another review, but I decided to talk about one of my favorite albums by one of my favorite bands of all time, Surf's Up by The Beach Boys. Now based on the title alone, one might think that this is just another Surf and Safari, Surf and USA kind of album, but clearly based on the cover, you're in for something else. Surf's Up uh, may not be as cohesive as their albums such as Pet Sounds or Smile, but it is surely one of the band's most cohesive efforts, and it contains some of their darkest yet most emotional moments in their career. It may sit in my number four spot for my top five favorite Beach Boy albums, but it is undoubtedly an amazing record. It's an album I go to quite often whenever I'm feeling low, as there are somber moments on here that I could really relate to when I'm feeling down. But there's also tracks in here that are very uplifting at times and seem to help me understand whatever it is I'm going through. I kept these thoughts in mind when deciding on which album to ref review first by the Beach Boys, just because they have so many good albums and so many I want to talk about. But I feel that during these tough times, I've been going to this one a lot, so... That was a good one to start off with. Like in my previous videos, I'll be going track by track as to what I think about each song, and then the album as a whole. Now Surf's Up begins with the band at probably their most ironic, with the track Don't Go Near the Water setting the stage for the Beach Boys, showing that they can in fact change their sound and what they sing about. I love this track a lot. It's a dark yet catchy pop song that becomes hauntingly beautiful once we reach the end of it where everyone comes together and sings behind that gorgeous harmonica. But once we get to the next track, Long Promise Road, it almost blows that first song out of the water, no pun intended. It's uplifting lyrics, pounding drums, incredible synthesizer work, and rocking guitar solo goes to show just how talented of a songwriter Carl Wilson was. I know a lot of people credit Brian Wilson for the success of the Beach Boys, but his brothers Carl and Dennis Wilson were very underrated members of the band and would write some of their most overlooked tracks from the 70s. Things get a little silly on the next track, Take a Load Off Your Feet, which has some weird yet adorable lyrics and a melody that tends to get stuck in my head quite often. So far the flow of this album is kind of strange, but it seems to work well in the sense that each track has its own tone to it, which I like a lot. Then we get to the heavenly track Di uh, Disney Girls by Bruce Johnston that stands out as a lovely ballad, yet fits so perfectly into the general mood of this album. Its lyrics are very poetic, and they give me a sense of nostalgia that no song I think can ever replicate. I wish that Bruce would have performed more lead vocals on the band's tracks, because I believe that the gentleness in his voice would have been adopted to many of their love songs very well, especially the ones that were just lying around this time. But we close the first side of this album with a bit of a twist, and that twist being a rendition of Riot in Cell Block Number 9 called Student Demonstration Time. It features new lyrics that criticize the brutality that student protesters were experiencing at the time, and it's probably the heaviest thing the band ever did, but I could see why it's hated on in the Beach Boys community. I think it's a good song, but it does kind of stand out a bit too much compared to everything else on this album. But you know, it's not a bad effort made by Mike Love, so I don't know, I'll give it that. It could be worse, and it does get worse along their career. The, the final, oh, side two. Sorry. Side 2 begins with the very psychedelic and the very atmospheric Feel Flows, which is another track by Carl Wilson that deserves so much more attention than it gets. The reverse echo effect on his vocals just adds so much more texture to his voice, and that duo between the distorted guitar and flute is just breathtaking. Probably one of my favorite moments off this entire album and in their career. Now, the final four songs on Surf's Up are quite possibly the darkest material that the Beach Boys ever put out. 
And this chain of depressing tracks begin with Al Jardine's Looking at Tomorrow, a welfare song. The one that's playing right now. Uh, this was the only track that I had trouble getting into at first. I just never knew what to think of it and whether or not I liked it. I do think now that it's quite important to the sound of this album. And while it is short, it displays some of Al's best guitar work, so I'll give it that. We then arrive to the peak of this disheartening music with A Day in the Life of a Tree, a song written by Brian Wilson and actually sung by their manager Jack Riley. This track to me is the most important track off of this entire album. To go into a little of what it is, or like the quality of the song, the shakiness in his voice just adds so much more beauty to the darkness of this track. And that powerful organ exemplifies the sadness that the lyrics already give off. It may be the farthest thing the band had ever been from their original sound, but that's what makes it such an important song in my opinion, and a highlight on this album. It shows just how far they were willing to go to extend their musical abilities and find a new sound in the early 70s. I know uh, one thing I like doing when I am with people that hang out with, well, people that listen to the Beach Boys, is I usually show them this song and see if they know it, just to throw them off because it sounds nothing like them, but it is definitely one of my favorite songs by them. Uh, this depressing sound only continues with Brian Wilson's next track, Till I Die, which features some of the band's most poetic and dismal lyrics as well as a consistent melody that really drives the mood of the song all the way to its end. But once we reach, or once we hear all the songs inside too, we get to the album's magnum opus, which is the title track. Probably one of the best vocal performances by Carl and Brian Wilson. Surf's Up is just one of those songs that just contains so much mystery to it, as the lyrics seem to be very abstract and philosophical yet at the same time seem to be a placeholder just for the music but the way Brian sings these lyrics make it seem like he's telling us like life secrets and making us nostalgic to the past some of the feelings this song gives me is just indescribable so I highly recommend that you check this song out if you haven't heard it already it's a masterpiece and one of the best album closers in the band's discography definitely and it's if you had only check out one song from this album, I definitely recommend the title track. So far, this in the last video is the title track to check out, which I don't know. Check all the songs out, but if you only had to pick one, definitely listen to the title one. Now to wrap up my thoughts up about this album, Surf's Up is a great example that the Beach Boys were no longer a Brian Wilson project, as the contributions made by everyone on this album is amazing and essential to the band's newfound creativity. While this album isn't similarly structured to their records like Love You, Sunflower, and Pet Sounds, I think the direction some songs take on here adds so much more variety to the album's track listing, something that can't always be said about their albums. Well, there you have it. This has been uh, my third review on this channel, and I'm happy to talk about such an incredible album. If you have heard this album, let me know in the comments, and sh let me know your favorite song on here, because uh, it's hard to pick a favorite song for me. There's just too many banging tracks on this album. Well, I hope you guys have a good one, and hope enjoy. hope you enjoy... I don't know, the videos I have up so far, and we can't wait for more. Alright, have a good one.